Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're making beadboard. Some people call it wainscoting, but I'm using the long coffee stir sticks and I'm going to stain them ahead of time with my classic cherry wood stain so that I won't get glue on them. The glue won't block my stain from adhering after it is um, glued to the template. So let's go ahead and get through with staining these sticks. Now, if you were going to paint it, you could go ahead and cut your boards and glue them to the template and then paint them. But because I'm staining them, I want to go on and stain them ahead of time. Similar like when I stained my cabinet before I assembled it to keep it from getting the glue on the, the wood and blocking it from allowing the stain to adhere or penetrate. Okay, so here I was kind of taking my time trying to be neat. I am working on top of a piece of wax paper, um, but after a while, um, little Gretchen got impatient and she really began to slosh on the stain. Now dolls, this may not be the perfect way. I actually probably should have taken the time to secure the sticks while I'm staining them, but I didn't dolls but it's going to turn out fine. It actually would be a good idea as well. I used two layers of wax paper, but when you're using the wood stain, aluminum foil is actually better if you're trying to kind of um, do it kind of in a, a enclosed space because you do it on the aluminum foil. It catches any drips or drizzles so it doesn't get on your um, work table or workstation and then you can just toss it when you're done. Now I did do quite a big batch of sticks because I wasn't sure how many that I would need and I'd rather have too many than not enough. Now after I was done staining an adequate amount I allowed them to dry overnight because you don't want the oils from the stain to hinder the glue from adhering to your template. So I, I let them set overnight. Now let me clean up this mess. Hmm? So here I am preparing my templates. Now dolls, I like to use brown paper bag. I have a lot of paper, packing paper left over from packages I've received, especially, um, you know, when you get things in the mail that are delicate, they pack it with brown paper. I just save it to make my templates on. So I measure the areas in my Roman House Dollhouse bathroom where I wanted to put the beadboard and I cut templates that are roughly the size of the areas. And there are my sticks. They've dried and you see they absorbed all of that um, stain. That wax paper is a mess, but they're all dry and they're, they look good. So I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. And my plan is to, after I get them adhered to the template, and I determine if I need to make them a little darker, I can do it then. But now at least they have their first coat of stain. So I measured, measured out and marked where I wanted to cut my stir sticks. I roughly wanted my, um, my, my pieces to be three and three quarters, three and three quarters of inches long. So just under four inches as far as the beadboard, because I still have to put a rail at the top or a header um, around the room so I don't want it to be too high so I'm just trimming them and I had quite a bit of trimming to do and it would have been nice if the stir sticks were even um, length and I could have used both sides but after I cut it I was only able to use one side if you know what I mean so I started to just collect the pieces that I'm going to use and put them in a bag so they would be separate from the remnant pieces. Now dolls, you know I don't throw anything away, so all those remnant ends, I'm going to save those because I can use them for another project. So always keep you a wood box or a container to keep your scraps in because they're going to become in handy in another project. So here I'm moving along, cutting the sticks and I'm using my easy cutter to uh, give my wrist a break and it was quite tedious I must say dolls I sped this part up because it was quite tedious 
but when I got done, this is what it looked like. I had a nice bag, the right length for what I needed to start to add to my template. And then I had all these remnant pieces and all of these are what I'm going to put into a bag because I have another project I'm going to do later on and I'm going to show you all how to make use of those remnant pieces. Now, if you're new to this channel or this is your first time watching, I love to make things from scraps and trash. So check out my playlist for my trash to treasure or furniture that I made from scraps. Now, here I am getting to what I call the fun part. So I have my templates. Now, my templates aren't exact. So confessions here, doll. I always tell you that even though things aren't perfect, they can still turn out good. Um, I'm not a perfectionist, dolls. I like things to be right. But in the process of making things for my dollhouse, things have a tendency to look really pre-K. So I want you to realize and know that just because it looks pre-K in the beginning doesn't mean you won't end up with something lovely. Now I'm actually using too much glue here. I didn't realize it until after I started adding the boards, but I'm going to start to thin it out more as I move along. But I'm lining it up at the bottom because the one part of my template is relatively straight, which would be the part that hits the floor. Now I'll be able to trim off any excess after my pieces have been added and they're dried. So no worries on that. But it just was too tedious for me, dolls, to cut all of those perfect. And even if you think you're cutting it perfect when you're cutting things by hand, for some reason, it's never perfect. I guess that's because we're not. But no worries on that because we have sandpaper and a blade and we can correct any imperfections when we're done with this portion. Now I did have a wet wipe on hand to wipe any excess glue if it oozed between the boards and you just gently line them up and I lined them up so that they would pretty much just cover the template. Now I was running into instances where some of the boards were curved and those I pulled out because that'll throw your alignment of your whole template off. So any of your sticks that are bold or curved toward the other board, just remove them and choose one that's straighter because you, you can't fix that dolls. You can't fix that. So I added it little by little because you don't want your glue to dry on you while you're adding. So I was trying to add small amounts at a time until I got a feel for how it was drying based on the speed of me placing them on the template and after I caught my rhythm for what I was doing I started to move a little faster <laughs> and there are times when you're doing a repetitive project like this you do have to catch a rhythm of how you're going to do it now I got into the second template and realized I could spread out wider or amounts of the glue because I kind of knew how I was going to lay them and I was confident that I could lay my sticks down before that portion that I'd spread out would dry. And so I went to work. This was a very relaxing and satisfying video, um, one to create. It was, it was really nice because it was nice to see it come together. I had in my mind what I wanted to look like. And as I worked and I could see it come together, I could imagine how it was going to look in the rooming house dollhouse bathroom. So I'm really, really excited about this project. I'm excited about um, the finishes and doing the details and adding the accessories. But yeah, this, this really was a fun project and I'm glad I'm able to share it with you dolls. So you'll know the same, very same process can be used with the regular popsicle sticks and even the jumbo crab sticks. It really makes it easier to install when it's on a template rather than sitting in front of the dial house or your project trying to cut each one and line it up against the wall. That's very tedious and it can be uncomfortable. It's a lot easier to create the template and sit at your desk and create these panels and then put your panels, adhere your panels to the wall. And because the, the brown paper bag is flexible, even if you have to remove a couple sections, it's really easy to divide them up and install them. 
So you can even make batches of these up to use for future projects. They work really, really well. So I'm just checking my uh, measurement again. And I already knew that I was going to have to trim them. I'm just checking to see approximately how much. Now, um, you definitely should do this with a blade. I actually have some electrical scissors that I use for quite a few things. They're pretty roughed up, but I'm going to trim along the edge of these with my electrical scissors. Now, after I cut them with the electrical scissors, I am going to come back over them again with a more precise cut with my blade, but I am marking where I want to trim it. And you can see where to trim it as well, where your template is. So again, just ensure that you're cutting at the right spot. And like I said, mark it with your pencil so you'll know exactly, because you wouldn't want to have done all that work and then lose part of your template because you cut it too short. Okay, and just take your time. This is not something you can just chunk through. You have to take your time because you're really going to have to bear down. Um, again, these are electrical scissors. They're not supposed to be used like this, but yeah, it's what I do sometimes, dolls. Now, after you've trimmed it uh, with the scissors, um, you know, just take your time, you know, with your blade. Now, if you want to, it's a, it's a good idea, very good practice to mark where you're going to cut. Um, I knew where I wanted it to be, dolls. So I was just trimming off those edges that were not, you know, along the line of what I wanted and just took my time. You can't rush through this, especially when you're cutting with the blade. And it's not going to be a problem when you get ready to install. If you have to do some extra trimming, again, it's it's not a big deal. Now, you may be able to avoid this if you cut each board perfectly and your template is perfect but it, it's just the way it goes dolls nothing is ever perfect if you buy a doll house that's already assembled there's some imperfections if you do it there's some imperfections so you're gonna have to learn to work through the imperfections and to modify what's not perfect but don't feel frustrated now I added another coat of stain so you see it looks a little bit richer. I'm really pleased with that and you see how the edge looks. Now I'm here I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist. I'm trimming more because I can see some a couple of the boards are going above the line of the template but no worries on that. But overall I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm really excited about the Roman House dollhouse bathroom especially now that I've decided that I'm going to do that, use that blue paper. This was a really fun project. I'm really glad to be able to share this with you dolls. I hope you use this technique in your doll house or room box setting. And dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I always enjoy creating these videos for you dolls, and I definitely want to say a special thank you to my subscribers. You all are awesome. I appreciate each and every one of you. And also to those of you who haven't subscribed but you're watching, I appreciate you as well. It sure has been fun spending this time with you dolls today. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.